Hi, welcome to another Inspia App Store optimization session. Today is going to be a little dive into campaign structure for search ads. So trying to help explain how you should structure your campaigns or your account and the reasoning for breaking things out by different match types and search match and targeting things like that. What we recommend is to have three different campaign types. Uh, one for search match only, one for your non-brand keywords, and one for your brand keywords. Now, the reason you would want to bid on your brand keywords is to protect your brand name from competitors showing ads on top of it. Uh, if you don't have much of a brand name, you may not have to worry about this, uh, but if you do have a brand branded app where a lot of people are searching your brand term and downloading your app, you really do want to be protecting it, otherwise competitors will show ads on top and steal away valuable brand installs from you. Even if competitors are not explicitly bidding on your brand, search match or broad match can expand a keyword that they're using into showing ads for your brand term. But the absolute two campaigns that we suggest everyone use are, exact, are search match and non-brand. Now, in your search match campaign, we recommend that you only use search match targeting and you don't add any keywords. This is because you want your search match to be for discovery. You want it to go out and find you new keywords that you then add into your non-brand uh, keyword campaign as broad and exact match keywords. Now, search match uh, is going to go out and match to a lot of different random things, uh, but over time you want to optimize it by uh, finding the top performing keywords or top performing search terms and underperforming search terms and you want to add them as uh, negatives once they pop up to your search match campaign. Once you've got enough data to say, all right, this particular search term has given us 10 conversions, we think we have enough data to be sure that it is a good performer. Um, oh, backing up one second, you want to add all the keywords that you're bidding on uh, as broad match negative to your search match campaign. And this is because you want search match to be new keyword discovery. You want it to go out and find uh, keywords or search terms that you haven't even thought of to bid on um, and help you figure out whether those, those search terms are performing well or not. Um, this is the ultimate goal of search match, what's performing, what's not performing, things that you aren't aware of yet. Uh, in broad match, the way it works is that, let's say we have the, the negative keyword to do. So this is an exact match denoted by the brackets. Then to do would be blocked if we searched it. If we searched to do app though, it would not be blocked because we're only saying block anything that explicitly is this phrase to do. So if we had a to do broad match, that means that both all words in the negative must be found in the search term in order for it to be blocked. So to do would be blocked. To do app would be blocked because it includes the phrase to do. However, do app would not be blocked or do or to do because there's a space here. It's not all the words are not found in this particular uh, or to do actually to do would probably not be blocked uh, because there's a space. Uh, this negative keyword would be, would be looking to see is to do uh, found in the search term and if so block it. But there's no space here, so allow it. So moving back here, you, you want broad match negatives. Don't broad match into synonyms like do or anything like that. Again, it only prevents all words from this negative keyword from being, once they're found, from serving an ad. And the reason that you add broad match negatives is because you have a broad match ad group. You want all the broad matches for to do or any other keywords that you're bidding on to be captured by this broad match ad group. You want search match to be complete new discovery. Go find us other things like to do, like competitor keywords, like other things that people are searching in the app store that we are not aware of and we're not bidding on. 
And once you find performers, you want to add them as broad match negative, just like all the keywords that you started off with. And then you want to add those top performers into your broad match ad group and your exact match ad group. Anything that underperforms, let's say that we see a search term that has served, I don't know, uh, 100, it got 100 taps or 100 impressions even, and we see that the, the cost per acquisition is $5 compared to our account average of $2.50. That underperformer, we want to add as an exact match negative. The reason that we don't add it as a broad match negative is because there could be variations of that particular search term that perform well. All we know is that this, the exact match negative, maybe it's to do apps <clears throat> light. Let's just say that's the search term. To do apps light is not performing. It's got a poor CPA. We've had enough data to say it's not good. Uh, it could be that if somebody adds iPhone onto the end of that, then the CPA goes down to 175. We don't know. We haven't, we haven't seen this variation before. We haven't seen its performance. So we don't want to block everything with to do apps light in it, just in case another variation performs well. So anything that performs well, add it as a broad negative, add it into your broad and your exact ad groups. Anything that underperforms, add as an exact match negative. Now, non-brand. You're going to want to break non-brand campaign into two ad groups. And these are going to contain duplicate keywords at first. And actually should always contain duplicate keywords. All the broad, in the ad broad ad group, you only want broad match uh, types. And in the exact match ad group, you want exact match types only. And then you want to add all the exact match keywords as negatives to your broad match ad group. And this is because you want to force all of the exact match searches to the exact match ad group where you have the highest control over your bid. Here's an example to do. Um, if this is an exact match, you know that the only thing that will ever possibly match to this keyword, that this keyword will ever trigger in terms of matches is to do. You won't match to to do app, you won't match to to do even, you won't match to uh, to do is, you won't match to anything else. So now you can bid confidently that if we're paying, if we're willing to pay a dollar for to do, and I should say brackets to indicate that it is exact match. If we're willing to pay, willing to pay a dollar for to do, that's the only thing that this dollar bid will be applied to. However, for to do broad match, if we're willing to pay a dollar. To do broad match can match to to do ist, to do to do apps, productivity apps even. Um, our brand term, all sorts of things. Do list. To do well, actually, sorry, scratch that. Yes, that's, that's true actually. Uh, so unlike the, the broad negative, um, broad match positive keywords, regular keywords will match to all sorts of things. Um, so you could get any one of these uh, search terms matching to this to do keyword as a broad match. Whereas exact match is only one possible trigger that's going to cause an ad to show to do broad match can match to lots of different things. So suddenly your $1 bid is being applied to all these different possible matches, uh, search terms, and some of these may not perform so well. Uh, productivity could convert at half the rate that to-do list or uh, converts at, or to-do, or to-do could convert very well, in which case it's great, you wanna raise your bid for to-do, but for productivity, you wanna lower bid. Now. That's why you want to add all of these search terms as exact matches so that you can uh, be confident about what bid you're using. And so that's why you want to add all of the, the search terms that you're seeing 
performance floor and that you know you want to bid on is exact match. And then broad match is going to be keyword discovery, just like your uh, your search match is, but it's going to be a little bit more relevant, even though sometimes it may not seem it, than search match, because you're you're telling Apple that you want traffic related to to do, not anything that is in my app's metadata. So, at exact match, all your exact match keywords as exact match negatives to broad match, and you don't need to worry about negative keywords for exact because there's only one possible thing that you're matching to. Um, <clears throat> and then anything that's performing from your search match add as an exact match. Uh, so that is a, a brief discussion of campaign structure <clears throat> and match types for Apple search ads. Um, broad match, this, this can be a lot of work maintaining both a broad and <clears throat> an exact match ad group. So if you don't have the time uh, to manage that uh, and ma maintain mirror keywords in each of these and negative keywords, then <clears throat> you can go ahead and just focus on your exact match ad group uh, and then change your exact your negative keywords in your search match campaign to exact. This will allow uh, search match to pick up broad variations, any kind of variations. Um, and then you do want to move <clears throat> each of your uh, performing search terms that pops up into <clears throat> excuse me your exact match ad group uh, and add it as a negative to your search match. So if you do have the time, it's great to maintain a broad and an exact match ad group, but if you don't have the time, then just worry about an exact match ad group uh, for your keywords and search match. And again, we recommend bidding on brand if you have a brand that needs to be defended. It's a lot of information, a lot of uh, uh, complicated stuff, but when it comes down to it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And once you get into the habit and the hang of things, uh, you'll pick it up pretty quick. If you would like uh, uh, an explanation of this over Skype or uh, a walkthrough, we're happy to, to walk you through this. Again, it can seem kind of confusing, especially just done in an Excel like this. Um, we're happy to, to help you understand and apply it to your account. And we're also happy to do some coaching or help optimize your campaign. So just give us a shout at hello to Zipia.co and we can chat. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow us on our blog at incipia.co slash posts. Uh, subscribe to our email list. We're up to about 600 people now. And please let us know what topics or questions you have, and we'll cover those in a future top uh, video. Thanks so much.